fraud, falsifying financial documents, and money laundering. All of this at a DAX-listed company. Last June, the dealings at Wirecard came to light. The German payment service provider went bankrupt after executives admitted that almost 2 billion euros in assets were likely non-existent. Since then, many have been asking, how could this have been happened? Today, a parliamentary inquiry committee is presenting some of their findings. To the outside world, it was a successful DAX group. But in reality, it was riddled with fraud. Behind a clean facade, criminals were at work. Former CEO Marcus Braun is currently in custody. Ex-Asia board member Jan Marzalek is a fugitive. Wirecard was once an electronics payments service provider and even operated a bank in Germany. But it turns out some sales were completely made up. The balance sheet showed a 1.9 billion euro hole. Since then, public prosecutors began investigating the company on commercial fraud and document falsification charges. There had been rumors for years. Media outlets repeatedly reported inconsistencies. But each year, the EY auditing firm gave Wirecard a seal of approval. The German financial regulator Bafin didn't investigate the allegations either. Quite the opposite. Journalists who reported on fraudulent dealings at Wirecard received complaints. Since October, a parliamentary investigative committee has been scrutinizing the role of the authorities in this scandal. But one thing is certain, Germany's financial supervisors are ready for reforms. One of the heads of this inquiry committee is Fabio De Masi. He's a member of the German parliament, the Bundestag, for the left party, and he joins me now. Welcome to DW. Uh, Fabio, what is uh, your most important finding in this investigation so far? Well, our most important finding is that um, multiple state agencies failed to do their job properly, while there were individuals that had warned those agencies. So there was a kind of uh, collective attitude um, to, to close, close eyes. And um, we also found that the German government was quite active, actually, in China, in the context of the German-Chinese financial dialogue. Um, to lobby for Wirecard. A lot of political personalities had been lobbying for Wirecard. And just to give you one example, some of the supervisors that were supposed to uh, ask tough questions on Wirecard were actually trading in Wirecard shares um, instead of doing their job. So uh, do you think that is one of the biggest problems here, that uh, state actors have been financially involved uh, when, when owning uh, wire card shares? Well, that's part of the story that uh, some people in the supervision agencies were trading in those stocks and uh, that we didn't have proper rules in Germany in place to prevent this kind of insider trading, uh, for example, in the financial um, mm. uh, supervision authority. But on the other hand, we know that all those um, uh, decisions that have been taken, like the uh, short-selling ban on Wirecard, were approved um, by the ministry, or at least um, have been uh, notified uh, mm. in the German Ministry of Finance. So there's also the question on political responsibilities. And it was Chancellor Merkel who indeed lobbied the most powerful man in China for Wirecard. And you do not simply go to China just because her former economic minister, Gutenberg, who was a lobbyist for Wirecard, told her so. But this was a decision that had been mm. taken in the German government because like, Wirecard was one of the key assets in the German-Chinese financial dialogue. And so uh, the German government has to answer why they did not react to the reporting of the Financial Times. Mm. So uh, this report, or the scandal rather, has moved Germany's federal financial watchdog into the crosshairs. It has a staff of 2,700, but reportedly there are only five people who are licensed auditors. Do you see signs that the overhaul of the watchdog as a result of the scandal are going into the right direction? Well, we have some minor improvements now. For example, we had a two-tier approach. So first we had a kind of like um, privately governed organization that was supposed uh, to check balance sheets and they had also multiple conflict of interests. 
Um, but, uh, for example, the so-called DPR, which comes prior to the um, financial supervision watchdog BaFin, um, when it comes to, to checking the accuracy of balance sheets, they uh, actually uh, asked even Wirecard to uh, equip them with arguments why they should not investigate fraud. So you could see a lot of collusion of interests here. But indeed, the problem is, the primary problem is, that uh, the German Financial Supervision Authority only has those five people um, who are even able to, to, to audit companies. And that's insane. That's like uh, if the German police would basically go to the Formula One or to the uh, Oktoberfest in Bavaria and tell them to examine, you know, like alcohol controls um, on, on, hmm. on, on German roads. Uh, that's, that's not possible. And so you need a, a state agency that is able to do its job. It needs the best people in the market and it needs tough people who ask the right questions. Fabio Damasi, member of the Parliamentary Inquiry Committee into the Wirecard scandal. Thank you for your thoughts.